briefly do want to touch on the Pacers Knicks game, which ended just in the most the most horrible fashion for New York, man. Like for a team that had the injury bug really all season with Mitchell Robinson early on and then Julius. And it just it just like when it rained, it poured for them. You lose Bojan in the playoffs. Then Josh Hart got the ab strain. OG pulls his hamstring. And then the icing on the cake in the worst way possible, Brunson breaks his hand. Like you just – we said it in the last one. They literally just run out of bodies. And they actually ran out of bodies. You can't – Brunson was the last one. If anybody could have couldn't have gotten hurt, it was him. And the game was already in a tough spot. OG tried to give it a go but was not. He ain't look right. He was limping from the tip off. I was like, bro, how did this man get cleared? Like, I'm did watching see, brother. I'm like, what? Did you see him on the bench like before the game started? Bro, yeah. The, 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 Zooted. <laughs> some people say it was hilarious, bro. Zooted, bro. They had him on the painkillers. <laughs> hey, bro, say so he don't even know his name right now. Bro. <laughs> um, a valiant effort from D Vincenzo, who was sparking at all playoffs. He almost had a 40 ball, but Look, it's just it's it's too much to overcome with these injuries, unfortunately. And like all credit to Josh Hart for thugging it out and playing 37 minutes on that abdominal strain. That you most people sit this game out, mm-hmm. no matter what the game seven or not. Like, that's just a hard injury to play through. For him to almost play 40 minutes with that, you gotta tip your credit or tip your cap to the the effort that he he gave this entire series, but just they just could not avoid the injuries all the way to the very end. And uh the Indiana Pacers are in the Eastern Conference Finals. Yeah, man. Credit to them. I mean, it's tough. Like I said, the injuries definitely played a huge factor. Like the guys, like we said <laughs> we talked about we were trying to talk about a, a Knicks uh Knicks Boston series and was like, bro, we don't even know if they're gonna make it as far right. as like players. That's exactly what happened. But I mean if you're the Pacers, you play who's in front of you. You know what I mean? They still went out. They still won this game. Like, they made it a point to where – because on the road, their defense was has been suspect. And they don't play with the same intensity that they do at home on the road. But in this game, they definitely made it a point to do that. Like, you, could, the whole game was just 94 feet ball pressure. The yep. entire game. Like, listen, we're going to try to be as physical as we can with Brunson. Show him different bodies, even if it's him coming off a screen. We're gonna hedge super, super hard. Him, him, even bringing the ball up the court, he's gonna have to work for it. So they made it a point to just be annoying, be a pest, be physical with him. Um, that like helped throw him off his game at least a little bit, at least enough, I should say. Um, so they were active on defense. And they also were hitting absolutely everything. It seemed like like the guy, bro, they could not miss. It seems like every every shot felt like it was going in. Like it was a mid range, a three. Um, Siakam had it going early, which is good to see. Tyrese Halliburton, I literally texted you because I I don't know if you've seen it because I know you were at the game. I don't know if you've seen it when he went up for the layup. He had an open layup and like did a three hundred and sixty and passed it out to the corner. I texted you, I'm like, bro, he's pissing me off, bro. Like, <laughs> he, like scored a ball literally after that. He scored ten straight points and was yeah. just insane from there on out. So he was talking crazy. He was talking junk. I like when he gets in that mode where he's uh kind of feeling himself a little bit. Like the same time when it was closer to beginning of the season when he kind of did the Dame time thing when they played the Bucks, like when he gets mm-hmm. in that mode and remembers that yo, I'm actually like one of the best guards in the league, is good to see because he's that talented to where he can go off on any given night. So it's a combination of all those things and then the injuries to the Knicks. It was just it was just too much. Like it, it was just way too much for the Knicks to handle. And it's funny because you, you mentioned it with Divincenzo, but like even though they were depleted. Everybody's tired. Even the guys that was on the court, like um, Hartenstein and DiVincenzo, they were limping. They was everyone was tired. They still had guys trying to step up and play for them. Like Alec yeah. Burke was hooping. Alec Burke was working. DiVincenzo was hooping. Like even then, they still had guys step up. So it's just unfortunate. They, they just really just ran out of out of uh, out of bodies. So it's a little bit tough. Um, hopefully, you know, next season they. I mean, hopefully Tips can, like, not play these guys 50 minutes every game on, like, a random Tuesday in January. <laughs> can we not do that to kind of get these guys a little bit of rest going into the playoffs? Yeah. But, yeah, they just, they just got to kill the injury bug, man. That was kind of the biggest thing, I'd say. It's tough, though, because even, like, the, a lot of injuries that they sustained are not, are not even, like, related to heavy minutes. Like, 
The Mitchell Robinson one, like he rolled his ankle. Brunson just broke his hand. Julius Randle, I like guess, shoulder got caught up. It's just like they just got super unlucky, bro. That's no, it's unlucky. definitely a combination of luck. It's not strictly just like to play these guys, all oh, they got yeah. hurt. But I mean, you got it, some of it you could say kind of goes into you know, like, you did have two them. different muscle strains with OG and Josh Hart, like those you could definitely chalk up to just overuse and stuff. So like, I ain't a trainer. I don't know what, what the official diagnosis is going to be, why it happened. But at the end of the day, like you said, they really just ran out of gas, ran out of bodies. And if you're a Pacers, you can only play what's put in front of you. And so they they take advantage of the opportunity. I think we both said it on the last one, this, this feels eerily similar to the Hawks Eastern Conference Finals run where it's like, did anybody really think this team would be here right now? No. Mm-hmm. They there. I don't know how competitive this series against the Celtics is going to be. My gut reaction is to also say it's going to go six games, but not the same type of six games that Mavs Wolves, my prediction would be. I think it's going to be the two games that the Pacers win, or it's going to be two bad shooting nights for the Celtics. Because when you live or die by the three like they do, um, against a team like Indiana who plays just so fast paced and get out in transition, like that's I just feel like you're gonna get one or two perfect storm games where it's like they're not hitting anything. Every, like Indiana's just ripping it off the rim and running and pushing pace and getting easy baskets. So I, I feel like that'll happen twice, but the Celtics are gonna probably be able to dominate them fairly easily in the rest of these games. So I wouldn't be surprised if it went five. I don't think they would get swept at worst. I think they get gentlemen sweep, but five or six games and, and Boston will get them up out of there. That's my that's my gut feeling. I don't really know what could change that. I feel the same exact way. I, I picked Boston in five, but I the the any game they lose in this series is gonna be because Boston lost. Like right. no disrespect to the Pacers, but like if you're really not supposed to be here. I'm gonna be completely honest with you. Don't get right. me wrong. You played great. You only the only thing you can do is play was in front of you. Like that's not your fault. Mm. But in reality, it's like if Boston loses these, like Boston loses two games, I will agree. It probably is gonna be a Boston bad shooting night, or just a like Boston just has those games where they just give games away, which is so weird for a, a team that's What so happens weird. when you play that Missoula ball, live by it, die by it's gotta be the three. Yeah. Sometimes when you don't drop, you drop, you lose games that you really don't have business losing because you just are so heavily reliant on getting it from the three point line. That's true. So I, I hear you. I just think I, I only think they'll have one of those games. Like if I just had to predict, I wouldn't seem to be surprised if they had two of them. Um, but yeah, I, I think that Boston is com- wins this comfortably. So I'd say yeah. five, I wouldn't be surprised if it goes six. Um, but in reality, I, like Boston's going to the finals. Like that's just set in stone. 